Okay, that was that was crazy. That's actually really good. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and break this down. Break down the episode. This is my oh goodness, spoiler free review of this episode. Um, I thought it was actually a pretty good episode, to be honest with you. Uh, the thing that kind of like narrows the gap with this for me is the backstory. The backstory of um, Colonel or General Luther. So the reality is that this Lex or this Alexander Luther, um, his... <laughs> Well, wait, this is not supposed to. I can't go into it. Crap. Oh, my gosh. All I'm going to say is this. The way that they actually conveyed his backstory and what's what he's willing to do, like what he's willing to actually give to unearth who our Kal-El is, what he's capable of, and prove him wrong is... Is, is limitless. Like, I mean, for one, I was kind of like, yo, he's crazy. Like, why would he sit there and do that to his ship? Why would he do that to his suit? Like, I was like, yeah, he's crazy. But then the last five to 10 minutes of the episode makes you completely understand why. I think it was like, like the last five minutes. And I had a conversation with Lucas about this, exactly what it was and, and what the situation was. And Lucas didn't believe it, but I knew exactly what the situation was. Um, the other thing that I did like about this episode was um, the camaraderie of the brothers. Like they really truly love each other. Like it's not just on some, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this for you. Like, no, like the brothers really truly do love each other. Um, there was a conversation that happened between Jonathan and Jordan that I felt was very compelling. Um, I was like, this is a beautiful moment. Um, this this makes sense for their characters. Um, but but more than that, it kind of like it doesn't make them just one note. Like they both of the brothers definitely have their own trajectories. Like as far as this episode, um, Jonathan was the fish out of water. Like he he didn't have the playbook he needed to be able to run the plays. He couldn't learn what he needed to learn. He felt neglected by his dad. One of the things me and uh, Lucas even talked about was that neglect and what that would do for the family dynamic. And even General Sam Lane had a conversation with uh, Clark in this episode is that your decision to do this, what you did, is going to tear your family apart. And technically it already is in small blurts, but at the same that time, they're also becoming stronger together. Like, even though, like, yes, this is a very compromising situation, this is also molding them to be a more uh, well-rounded family in and of itself. Um, but again, I, I did appreciate some of the other things that were happening when it comes to what Clark was deciding to be and was deciding to do for his family. Um, because this is the first time I felt like, oh, okay, like Clark understands that not only does Jordan need help, um, but this isn't just about Jordan, why he's there. This is about, and I think the other thing that I found out was that Lois really is the glue. She's, she's the connective tissue that binds the family together, like that keeps them maintained together. Um, and she, in this episode also, her backstory is kind of being like, shown as to where she's going what's the trajectory of where her character is going because i was kind of like what are they going to do with, like what is she going to really do like is she going to go and report from across the way which most reporters now they could literally live in multiple different cities and, and they don't have to be there at the actual physical location to do what they need to do and i think probably in seasons to come they'll you know reintroduce stuff like that but in this one they have a clear objective they're giving Lois. Now, part of that is like she literally had nothing to do. But then another part of it is she's fishing for something that she knows isn't right. And she wants to kind of course correct and figure out what she can do to fix the problem, which I appreciate that they're giving her something to do. But I think that the other thing I have to give her credit for is that um, she really is um, the glue to the family because the family that had a breakdown moment and Clark couldn't fix it. 
hard to know what to do. Like, matter of fact, like both of the, the boys were freaking out and he was just kind of like saying, well, I'll do this, but it just didn't help. It didn't help the situation. Another thing is they introduced um, probably the the lowest antagonist, which is Morgan Edge. He finally makes an appearance in this episode. And I mean, it's evident that he is a very much so a manipulator. Um, the other thing that I find very interesting about this is that this so far, they have not mentioned anything Arrowverse related. Even in the moment in this episode, I was kind of like, oh, they're going to explain it with this. They did. Like it was almost like it didn't happen. Oh, that's because. Oh, so. Oh, hmm. So for them, it probably didn't. That makes more sense now because in the in the crossover, which I'll talk about more in our spoiler review, me and Lucas. Superman wasn't one of the totems. It was the Superman, Brandon Ralph Superman. And then Lex Luthor replaced him. So everything that would have happened or did happen happened to them very differently. So they may not have any account to Crisis. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. But you would figure that Barry would have told him. Whatever. I'll leave that for whatever. At this point, nothing from the airverse has to be connected nor is it to be if if that's the 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 pivot point uh what else what else what else what else oh they did uh show the actor that's playing the role of Lex Luthor or Alexander Luthor or at this point they they've just said that he is considered to be what is his name uh i think it is just captain luthor i think that's the the what they actually established his name is um, but the uh, I've seen the actor before. He definitely did play the role of what was it? it? Wasn't Silas? He played a role in um Smallville. No, no, no. It wasn't Smallville. It was um Vampire Diaries. Uh, he played a role there, and he was actually a pretty good villain at the time. But this character, he he's very different because I. I I was watching him the whole entire time, and I I feel like he may be a good guy. But we'll we'll talk about it more in our spoiler discussion. I just wanted to kind of break down um, what I saw in this episode. Um, I did like the episode. I think the first episode is definitely stronger. But again, there's different things that they do in this from a production standpoint. The production value is so good. Soundtrack is amazing. I was really surprised how good the soundtrack is. The only, uh, I think the only uh, issue that I had, and it wasn't even so much the actual Fortress of Solitude moment. It was more so like the suit that they gave my man's dad. And that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to spoil what I'm talking about, but that suit, it just didn't look good. It didn't look like the, yeah, it, it, it wasn't good. But this 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 setup for this is very interesting because if you remember anybody that's a Smallville fan, for real, for real, you really felt like you know Terrence Sapp really was the villain of the story, and he always was antagonizing Clark. Like he wasn't like the Jor El of Smallville was never to me until like season ten a good influence for Clark. Like it was almost like he was putting him in these precarious situations all the time. And I feel like this is another one of those situations that I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this episode. I'll leave it at a 8 out of 10. I actually really did enjoy it. And I can't wait for the next episode, especially looking at that preview for the next episode. But I'll talk to you guys later. Keep it locked. JVS Wingle Stop. Peace, guys.